If you're looking to create some high level YouTube videos, then the gear that you're gonna be investing in is important. And so you're gonna wanna stick around while I break down what we use here at Think Media at Anderson Studios. I'll be breaking down the, the camera we use, the lights and the mics, the placement of all those things. And then be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll be showing you how you can use one corner so that you can maximize your space. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori with Think Media, and this channel is all about helping you build your influence with online video, and we do that by sharing the best tips and tools on how you can do so. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be sure to post the links down to everything that I mentioned in this video and studio tour down in the description, so be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions while I break down this setup, any questions, let me know down in the comments, as well as any video recommendations that you would want us to make, and I'll do my best to get to those questions. But with that being said, let's break down the camera setup that I have going on here at Anderson Studios. And for the body, I have the Sony a7S III. This is a full frame camera that shoots 4K at pretty much every frame rate you need. Uh, essentially, that just means it shoots great video for talking head, kind of like what I'm doing right now, as well as any slow motion that you would like to do. So if you wanna get into some slow motion and get cinematic shots, you can do it with this camera, and that's why we love it. It's just a very reliable camera, has great autofocus, great battery life, uh, it has no record limit. And really, I would say there's nothing wrong with the camera. And we love that this camera could also shoot in S-Log at 10-bit, which essentially allows us to color grade the footage coming out of the camera. But nonetheless, love this body. Uh, really one of the best cameras for video out on the market. And then for the lens, we have the infamous 24 to 70 G Master lens. We've had this lens for over like two years and we've absolutely loved it. It is a zoom lens, but I love the focal length that 24 to 70 gives you. At 24 millimeters, you're able to get a nice wide shot. I would say a shot essentially like what you're seeing right now, it's pretty wide. And then you have the ability to zoom all the way into 70, which will really make your background look super blurry, which is what a lot of people want. But the ability to have both options is great. And at 2.8, it's really gonna give you that nice blurry background no matter what focal length you are at. And then as you could see on the front of it, we have an ND filter on a hinge. This hinge could be bought on Amazon, I believe still, but this ND filter just allows us to film outside. So if you wanna go outside, do some run and gun stuff, uh, this allows us to maintain our settings. If you're ever shooting outside with a camera like this, you're gonna want an ND filter. So if you got a video guy and he ain't got no ND filter, you better be like, yo, where's your ND filter, bro? We need to get that crispy blurry background even when we're outside. And then as far as what the camera is sitting on, you wanna make sure you put an expensive camera like this on a good, reliable tripod. Uh, but we have a Manfrotto tripod that's uh, aluminum and it's uh, super high quality. It, it's taken a beating and it's still held up over eight years or so. But I love that it has a ball head. So if you need to level out your shot, you can do so. And it also goes pretty high up uh, as you need it to be, uh, which is nice and versatile. And I also love that it just has the clamps I like the, the clamp tripod versus the twisty knob ones because I just feel like you can not tighten it one day and then it just fall over. And so nonetheless, a very reliable system. And what's really cool is we actually have a quick release system from Manfrotto that we have on every tripod uh, we have here. And it just allows you to pop off and on any camera or whatever. If you want to put a teleprompter on here, put the quick release on. Uh, but I just love it because if you pack up or you set up, that's all you have to do to get the camera on. I literally have it on this camera so I could pop it off, do what we gotta do, and then if I need, just need to pop it on, could do so as well. But that is a Manfrotto quick release system. Now, uh, we do have an audio setup that I wanna break down, and I'll break it down later in the video, but the next thing I wanted to talk about is the lighting setup of this studio. Now, I don't want you to forsake lighting, okay? Lighting's very important. I would even say lighting is everything. If you pulled the trigger on the camera setup I just broke down, but you didn't invest in a good source of light, you're gonna do yourself a good disservice. And we found using uh, lights like these, which are cob lights, uh, produce a great soft look on your face. And really, regardless of what camera you are using, uh, pulls out the best out of it. And so with that being said, shout out to GVM for sponsoring this video. Great video maker. If you don't know what they do, they make great products for creators and studios like this. If you need a light or if you need a teleprompter, if you need a slider, they have great options and we'll be sure to post their links down in the description below. But we're actually using their light as a key light and specifically this light's super awesome. It's called the GVM ST. 300R, and what's special about this light other than other ones is it's dual-sided. As you can see, there's one side that produces a light, and then there's the back side. But to make it simple and not to lose you, the front side gives you uh, the lights you need to light your face. This is lights uh, daytime temperature. It actually goes all the way from 2700 Kelvin, which is super warm, 
all the way up to 7500 Kelvin, which is super blue. So if you're like trying to match fluorescent lightings and stuff like that, you can do that. And so the versatility on this end is super great. And then the back side is actually something I've never seen before, but it's an RGB cob light. This part of the light gives you any color that you can possibly think of. And because this light is a 350 watt light, it puts out an incredible strong source of light no matter what side you use. A cool neat thing about this light that we love is because we put it on a C stand, which is a, a stand that will just hold something as heavy as this, uh, is that the controls of this light are on this kit that actually gets clamped onto a light kit and it just holds in place. But what's so cool about having your controls here is that when your light is all raised up and super high, depending on what ceilings you have or how far out the light is, that you can just be here and control it. And so if you're, you know, if you have somebody running the camera, you could totally obviously have them dial it in as needed. But this thing is awesome because not only does it give great power, it keeps the light quiet because it's powerful. And then you can also add V-mount batteries. So you don't necessarily need to plug into uh, AC power. You can actually just throw a V-mount battery on here. You can just be wireless and not have to worry about plugging in the power, which is nice and convenient sometimes. Another cool thing about this light and a lot of other lights that GVM offers is that they can be controlled by their app. And it's Bluetooth based, which is really nice because you can be still connected to Wi-Fi and then connect to the light. But having the ability to control it even away from this is super convenient. And then just being able to navigate the various different settings. What's cool about this light is it also has different scene modes. So you can replicate whether it's like paparazzi or a party or a police car, uh, but they have up to seven modes. And so if you're doing like commercial work or fun, you know, promos or something, you can totally use the flexibility of those scene modes, but having the app ready to go will make that really easy to use. Now this light isn't cheap. This light comes in at $900, but when you compare it to a leading brand like Aperture, which doesn't have even both sides, they just would just have the one side, their light's about $950. And so having the versatility, uh, if you were to just have one light, uh, is awesome that the other side has an RGB option. And I'll tell you why that's cool is because of this. Now this is one of the newest additions to our set uh, when it comes to lighting. And really it just adds a dynamic that I think is cool. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of like a fake window in the back, but uh, you can buy this thing called a gobo or a snoot. Uh, and again, the link's down in the description below, but adding it onto a light like this, and this is the GVM 200D, not as powerful as this, but still a great cob light. If you're looking to save some money, go for the 200D. All these lights have the same universal mount. So what's cool about these mounts is that you can easily pop off whatever, you know, soft box you want, or if you want like a waffle thing, uh, like we have over there, there's lights going on everywhere. Or if you even want a lantern light like this, they all go on cob lights. And so we've just super loved being able to add this to our shot it adds a leading line, which I'll break down at toward the end of this video. But all in all, getting a couple cob lights could totally level up your shot completely. And then as you see back here, we just have this uh, light that we got on Amazon. It's about a hundred bucks, but I think it just adds a cool dynamic and adds what is called a hair light or even a rim light. So when I'm sitting down and we put it in a certain specific area, it just adds a, a little bit of light toward my shoulder and my hair. So it kind of separates me from the background, but a super cool light. But those are really just the three main lights that we use on a setup like this. But thank you so much GVM for sponsoring this video. And again, check them out if you need a teleprompter, a slider, or any other kind of light they offer a myriad of lights. And so be sure to check them out. All right, so you know how I said that lighting is everything just moments ago? Well, audio is 50% of video. And similarly, if you buy a camera and you don't invest in good audio, then you're gonna be doing yourself a disservice. And so the audio setup we have for this and what we like to use is a boom setup where the mic is just framed right out of the shot, uh, but it picks up great because of what's coming around it. But the mic we're using is the Deity S Mic 2. This is a condenser XLR mic. Uh, it just captures very natural sound and it just sounds really clean compared to other things. Right now you are listening to the lav mic that I'll talk about in just a moment that I think you should have in your kit. But going back to the Deity mic, you could see there was a little bit of a difference where the Deity mic sounds a little more crispy. But we have it on this boom setup that we absolutely love. It's on wheels, so if it needs to be moved around. And if you stand, it could totally work as well if you wanna stand. Um, but we have an XLR cable that runs all the way to the uh, camera itself. And so uh, let me just get a light on here. But we have the XLR plugged into this XLR setup that you can buy additional that goes on pretty much any Sony camera. 
Uh, but this adds XLR inputs, which is super nice. So what is it doing? It's adding whatever audio is getting plugged in into the video file. In the past, people would have to record, people even do that now. They record you know, uh, their audio separately and then sync it up at post. We ain't got the time to do all that, all right? So we like to just plug straight into the camera. So when we hit record on that, then it actually has the file and I just hit my head on the light. But super simple audio setup uh, for talking head videos. You know, it's not gonna work too well if you plan on moving around. Now, I do think if you have one, you have zero. And so if you have this uh, audio solution, I would encourage you to get another option. So if you either have a guest with you or you just wanna switch it up and not use that and you wanna walk around, I would recommend getting what is called the Rode Wireless Go 2. This is a wireless lavalier kit that you could buy about $300 or so. And I'm actually, I've actually used it this entire video. It's been clipped on to my uh, hoodie right here. And it, it's great because Kyle's on the camera and it's able to just you know go wirelessly. And maybe you're asking, well then why don't I just get that, then that, you totally could. You could totally just get a lav mic and let that be your main source of audio. You wouldn't need to buy the Sony thing. But we just like the XLR option because we also have a podcast that we do. And so we plug in our podcast mics, which are short SM7Bs right into the camera. And so it's very convenient for that. And so it's definitely an investment that you can make to, to grow into. Too, so if you're gonna do other things, but totally if you get the Rode Wireless Go 2 and that would be your main uh, audio source, it's great. But having the other option that if you had a guest, they can be clipped up and then all that audio is going right into the video clip, which is super nice and convenient. Now, I told you that I would talk about some tips on how you can actually use a corner like this a few different ways. Uh, but if you've gotten value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And so real quick, let me show you how you can use this angle to get three different shots. So this first look is just using the white wall. We use this a lot for our church. We use it a lot for our podcasts. Um, but having a setup like this can be made interesting simply by using what is called leading lines. Now, if you look into this shot, you'll see how there's a shelf to the uh, over my right shoulder. I think it'll be your left screen, my right screen or whatever. But uh, this, this is making your eye look at me. You know, and so we also have that gobo light that we use. So those lights are also causing you to look at me. So anytime you can, you know, add things what are, what are called leading lines to force people's attention towards you, uh, do so because it's just a wise thing to do in a creative way. And then the shelf that we have going on here just adds another uh, layer to the shot, I think, or dimension, I guess you could say. And so even though it's just a plain wall shot, you could totally add some life to it by just adding a little bit of furniture. And these shelves that we bought are from Ikea. They're the Fajablo, I think is what they're called, uh, but very inexpensive furniture. And we like how light they are because they can be moved around because we could switch up the shots like this shot right here. Now this would be another style that you can go for uh, when it comes to using this setup. So the first shot that you saw was a little bit more compressed, had a, a flat wall behind me. And with this shot, it's actually the, the lens is all the way zoomed out to 24. So you're gonna get a little bit more of a wider shot, kind of more YouTube-y, and I would even say a little more intimate. It feels like I'm like right there with you, right? Um, but I like shooting like this, especially at this focal length lately, because uh, I like uh, the, seeing my hands uh, in the shot at most of the time, as well as the ability to zoom in and out as needed, so you can always do that. Uh, but what you see behind me is actually not a black wall. This is a black piece of photography uh, paper. It's about a nine foot uh, width roll. And we made a video on how you can actually conform a space with a fake corner like this. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a shot you can achieve. So we had the one shot with the white wall, and then we have another shot like this. Uh, I'd like to know down in the comments which one you like better, but let's check out the third shot, which is using the corner as your center point, uh, which we often do for our podcast, the Think Media Podcast. This is the shot that I was talking about when using the corner uh, as your main angle. And the camera's actually pretty far from me. We just have it zoomed in at about 60 or 70, which is giving us that nice compression. But having a shot like this is great. And it looks great because, again, the leading lines, everything is kind of focusing your attention at me, the subject. So uh, love this shot. But I actually forgot to mention during the sound portion of this, you know, this sounds really good here, uh, really because of treatment. I didn't break down treatment during audio, but if you have a very big space, but you're not treating your space, uh, then you're gonna get some echo and it's gonna bounce around. But we actually have a ceiling uh, sound panel that will prevent the sound from bouncing up. We have a rug on the floor uh, that also prevents it because this is a hardwood floor uh, loft that we use. 
And then along the walls, we have more of these sound panels. And again, we'll post everything in the description below. So leveling up your audio also requires leveling up your audio treatment, but uh, that breaks down the professional YouTube studio setup. And if you wanna check out another video from us here at Think, I actually talk about the pro level of vlog setup. If you're looking to start vlogging and you want the best setup possible, you can click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.